Okay. Welcome, everyone. My name is Michael Dizotel. I'm a Métis man with Ojibwe heritage from Manitoba, uh, and I'm here to as, serve as the knowledge keeper for tonight's convocation ceremonies. Before I do, I just want to tell you a brief little story and then ask you a, a brief little favor. I want to congratulate you all first because I know that you spent a lot of time and effort into uh, getting to the place where you are today, ready to, uh, to graduate. And it's been a lot of sweat, it's been a lot of Zoom meetings, it's been a lot of, um, of a huge time commitment. But now you get to go look forward and be excited about the future, about all the new challenges that you will be facing and some old ones, which I want to talk to you about. But you will also have a chance to meet new friends. You'll have to have new experiences. You'll learn uh, a, 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 a great deal about yourself as you begin your career out there in the real world. Um, and most of all, you will be the next leaders, the, the next generation of leaders that will help to make this world a better place. And that's a little bit of what I want to talk to you about. Uh, some of you will know of Murray Sinclair. Murray Sinclair is a former senator. He is a judge in Manitoba, an indigenous judge, and was also the commissioner of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. He was at an event that I was at about five or six years ago. And he asked people to think about a six-year-old that was in their life whether it was a family member, a child, or somebody that maybe is older now, but was at one time six. And to think about the memories of those people, of those little people, what they meant to you, how you loved them, what um, supports you, you had to be able to offer them. And why don't, he said, I want you to imagine what it would it feel like if somebody would have come and taken that six-year-old and took them away from you because they didn't want them to be, grow up to be like you. That is the experience of seven generations of Indigenous families. And it's affected almost every Indigenous person in this country to some degree, whether they went to residential schools themselves or whether they um, uh, are the, the children of residential school survivors. Because the one thing that nobody talks about much about the residential school system is the greatest sin, in my view, is that those kids that attended school didn't learn how to love. They weren't shown love, and they weren't in receipt of any love. And then they go back home when they're finished residential school and have to start their own families. So you can see that there's a cycle of dysfunction. So very quickly, just one favor is Indigenous people now more than ever need allies. We need people to share our stories, to talk about the way in which successive federal governments have been able to get away with um, all, of the, all of the injustices facing injustice people. And they can do that because they can, because there's no political price for them to pay. There's no, they don't lose any votes for not for providing clean drinking water. And, um, if with your voices can be lent to our voices, we might be able to turn that around and make a difference. As guests, Algonquin College acknowledges today's convocation ceremony is on the unceded traditional ter territory of the Anishinaabe Algonquin people. In re recognition of this, our graduate procession will be accompanied by members of the Spirit Wolf Singers. And you guys are in for a treat, I have to say. Using the traditional languages of the Anishinaabeg people, their song offers a message of encouragement 
and the powerful beat of the drum represents the heartbeat of our Mother Earth. Guests, families, and friends, may I ask you to please stand if you are able and remain standing as we welcome the students, staff, and faculty of the Algonquin College Class of 2023.
Well, and good evening. Before we begin, I do want to say thank you to Michael Desatel uh, and the for the Indigenous opening and to the Spirit Wolf Singers for leading us in and for their performance in celebration of our students. It was certainly a very meaningful and fitting way to begin our ceremony. <laughs> Guests, families, friends, and graduates, welcome to Algonquin College's 2023 Spring Convocation. My name is Chris Jansen. I am the Senior Vice President Academic at Algonquin College, and this evening it is my distinct honor to serve as the Master of Ceremonies, uh, helping guide us through all of today's exciting celebration. Convocation is a significant event, a time to celebrate, to reflect on your hard work, and to look forward to the next step in your journey. You, the graduates, came to college with a dream. You have successfully completed your studies. Many with the added uh, challenging circumstances imposed by the pandemic, and today you will re receive your diploma or certificate recognizing your accomplishments, resiliency, and the sacrifices you have made to be here today. You are now ready to meet the challenges that lay ahead. We wish you well and are delighted to be here this evening to salute you. We also welcome all of your friends and families who are watching via our live web streaming. We really are very thrilled that you're all able to join us here for this wonderful celebration. At this point, I would like all who are able to please stand and join with our vocalist, Alyssa Lafreniere from the Omnis Arts Center here in Perth in the singing of our national anthem. Thank you, Alyssa. Please be seated. One, one brief moment of, of uh, maintenance here. All right. At this point, um, I will now introduce the members of the stage party. I would ask that they remain standing until all have been introduced and the audience please withhold applause until all have been introduced. Jasper No, Director, Students Association. Valerie Saya, Member, Board of Governors. Rodney Wilson, Member, Board of Governors. Dr. Krista Pearson, Registrar. Sean Barr, Chair, Algonquin College. At the far end. Laura Stanbra, Vice President, Student Services. Braden Suggett, Director, Students Association. Michael Dezatel, Knowledge Keeper. Mark Savinkoff, Vice President, Advancement and Strategy. John Stewart, Honorary Degree Recipient. 
Claude Brule, President and CEO. Dr. Gail Beck, Chair, Board of Governors. Stephen Tudor, Member, Board of Governors. And finally, Chris Hahn, Dean of the Algonquin College Perth Campus. Thank you, please be seated. And now, may I ask the faculty to please stand? And, thank, you, thank you for joining me in recognizing the faculty of Algonquin College and the amazing contributions that they make in the success of our graduates. Thank you. I now call upon President Brulé, President of Algonquin College, to give the President's address. President Brulé. Thank you very much, Chris. Well, good evening, Kwe, bonsoir à tous et à toutes. Graduates, welcome. This is your day. I offer you my heartfelt congratulations, and I am both humbled and honored to help celebrate your success this evening. On behalf of the Algonquin College Board of Governors, I extend a warm welcome to you, to your loved ones, faculty, employees, and friends to our 2023 convocation ceremony. Now, I understand that some of you may have friends and family who cannot be here tonight, but are thinking of you with love and pride. So let me extend my welcome to all who are watching this event online. And I know that many of you are joined here tonight by people who support you and who have likely helped you in some way as you have taken this journey. Helped you with encouraging words, late night pep talks, perhaps picking up the slack at home, uh, maybe even providing you an emergency loan or even better, a grant or two. So if you're a family member or a friend of a graduate, please stand as you're able to or give a wave so that our graduates and our entire college community can show their appreciations to you. There you go, wave away. Thank you. Well, thank you for your support of our graduates. And graduates, there's another group of people here tonight who are very proud of you and your achievement. I would like to personally thank all of our employees, our faculty, our support staff, and administration at Algonquin College for their role in your journey. I want to especially thank the faculty for their part in getting you to successfully complete your program of study. Your teachers have prepared you to be entrepreneurial to thrive on change and be resilient. They've helped you to develop your capacity to pivot with agility, to take calculated risks, and to do so with imagination to capitalize on the many possibilities that await you. Now, we know that the world that you're entering upon graduation has its share of challenges, socially, environmentally, smell the smoke, economically, politically, and you may feel that it's more difficult to recognize the opportunities on your horizon. And we also continue to acknowledge the consequences of our past and work to be better allies to Indigenous people in our commitment to truth and reconciliation, as well as be better allies to people of color and those who are marginalized through our commitment to inclusion, diversity, equity, and accessibility. But it, if history has taught us anything, it's that with great adversity and challenges also come incredible opportunities. And that's what ultimately brings the best in people. Remember too, that you are not alone on this journey. You are part of a community of more than 220,000 Algonquin alumni, all people who have graduated before you. And the Alumni and Friends Network offer many opportunities for you to stay connected. So as you embarked on the next chapter of your journey, 
I hope that you will seek to reach your full potential in your career and in your life pursuits. But what does it mean to reach your full potential? We often hear the term, but do we ever pause to really think about it? Does it mean your physical potential? Does it mean your emotional or intellectual potential? In my opinion, the sweet spot of full potential is the inter intersection of all three. For me, reaching my full potential meant a desire to leave the place where I grew up and explore bigger possibilities that I knew and felt were out there, to challenge myself and to see what life had to offer beyond my familiar surroundings. And so, at the age of 17, I joined the Canadian Forces. I left home, I traveled to another province, and I began studying engineering physics. My time in the military taught me many valuable lessons. Lessons about self-discipline, learning to problem solve, lessons about leadership, and in particular, finding balance between assertiveness and humility. It was a chance for me to see our great country and explore the world. And after 22 years of service to our country, I was ready for a different kind of challenge. And that's when I joined Algonquin College. So my journey from that of a 17-year-old young man leaving home to this podium today has not been without its set of challenges and sacrifices. When I was a student, just like you, nothing came too easily for me. I discovered early on that I would have to work hard, harder than many of my peers to achieve good grades and find success. And I also discovered along the way that every experience I encountered was filled with learning opportunities. There were many times I did not achieve my desired goals upon first attempts. And the path that I thought I should be following changed as a result. It's all part of the journey. Coming to understand that your potential is there to be unlocked and that there's always another door waiting to be open and new experiences that will enrich your life. As you embark on your own journey, remember to keep an open mind, stay curious, never be afraid or too proud to ask for help, and do venture outside of your comfort zone. When I attended this year's Colleges and Institutes Canada Conference in Montreal, I was impressed by what keynote speaker Wes Hall had to say about living to your potential. You see, he speaks from experience as a man who rose from a Jamaican plantation shack to the boardrooms of Bay Street to become an accomplished businessman, an author, inclusivity advocate, and founder of the Black North Initiative. He said, never wait for perfect to do what you want to do or what you're passionate about. If it's the right thing to do, don't wait for the perfect time to do it. Do it now. So graduate, I stand before you with pride and confidence in your potential. I encourage you to stay true to your aspirations and don't let adversity hinder your progress. Instead, use the education and experiences that you've gained at Algonquin College as your compass to overcome those challenges and forge a path towards a future that is truly remarkable. In closing, graduates, I offer you my most sincere congratulations, and I wish you the best of luck in all your future endeavors. The world awaits your talent and your tenacity, and I have no doubt that in reaching your full potential, you will surpass even your wildest dream. Thank you, miigwech, merci. Thank you, President Brule, for your words of wisdom and thoughtful remarks to the graduates. We will now proceed with the conferral of an honorary degree. The college awards honorary degrees on occasion to acknowledge exemplary achievement in education, industry, community service, or other areas of leadership in our society. 
This honor is bestowed upon individuals who have made a difference in the lives of our students, our college, and our country. Individuals who share the college's values of caring, learning, integrity, and respect, and who serve as shining examples of what is possible when one is committed to the betterment of our community. I now invite Chris Hahn, Dean of the Algonquin College Heritage Institute, to come forward to introduce our honorary degree recipient. Chris? Thank you and hello everyone. John Stewart, may I please ask you to rise. Mr. President, members of the Board of Governors, graduates, families and friends, I'm honored to present our honorary degree recipient, an individual who represents the passion, heart and determination of Algonquin College, John Stewart. John has served as a pillar of the Perth community for nearly 40 years, as both a widely respected authority on heritage conservation and a close friend of Algonquin College and the Perth campus. His commitment to history and the preservation of the past has led to the revitalization of countless historical sites. He's also an accomplished artist and he's immortalized each of those sites uh, he worked on in a piece of art of his own making. John moved to Perth with his family in the 80s as the director of the Main Street program, which worked to revitalize aged downtown cores. Perth had been chosen as the pilot for the program, and John was tasked with initiating and supervising the plan. Now, around this time, the Perth campus started its heritage carpentry and masonry programs, which John saw as an opportunity to both build an important relationship and improve the local community. John served on the board of the campus's trades programs and his business, Commonwealth Historic Resource Management, has hired many alumni. And in addition, he bequeathed to the campus a significant in-kind donation of his company's work for research purposes. Mr. President, members of the Board of Governors, graduates, guests, in recognition of decades of service and a life committed to helping others, I'm pleased to present this honorary degree recipient, John Stewart. John Stewart, by authority of the Board of Governors and on behalf of President Brule, Algonquin College is pleased to confer upon you one of its highest honors, that of honorary degree. And I now call upon John to deliver his convocation address. I was told there. Were, I was told there was some kind of a hook that I had to. I can't find it. <clears throat> Good evening, Mr. President, members of the Board of Governors, families and friends. On behalf of the 2023 graduates from all four programs, Heritage Carpentry and joinery, business agriculture, early childhood education, and practical nursing, we, the graduates, would like to welcome you to our graduation and thank you for joining us. We are honored to be here. This live graduation is a landmark event. Throughout your, your lives, you will use 2023, the year you graduated, as one of uh, your life markers, as a reference point. And uh, with COVID, it will re remain even a more significant uh, landmark. Uh, there's a famous quote by Charles Dickens. It goes, these were the best of times and the worst of times. Coming out of COVID, we can add, these were the craziest times. It was almost a, cons 
it was almost a conspiracy of craziness. Confusion, fear, loneliness, isolation, depression are just a few of the descriptives. As students, you came to college looking for a bit of adventure, connections, meeting new friends. Instead, you ended up with two meter distancing, remote learning, isolation, checking for symptoms, wear a mask, don't wear a mask, wash veg vegetables. We got to the point that an underlying hint of soap just added to the ranch dressing in our salads. The fact that you persevered and successfully are here tonight deserves recognition. I want to congratulate all of you. I graduated from the University of Guelph as a landscape architect in 1972. And I'm still practicing and enjoying a, a really interesting career. What I can say from experience is Find a career that you can embrace. Do what you feel passionate about. Your career is going to take up a huge part of your time and your life and impact your family. I'm fortunate to have a wife and family who have joined me and are part of the, this journey. One that I could not have managed on my own. I'm sure a lot of you are in the same position. We moved to Perth on a two-year assignment with the National Trust of Canada. I was the first director of the Heritage Canada Main Street program with a mandate to find ways to encourage economic re renewal while preserving older communities and then using lessons learned to guide other communities. Perth was the living lab. It was the pilot project. We went on and expanded it to seven other communities. And when I left the National Trust, there were over 200 communities across Canada participating in the program. The program was and continues to be very successful. The strategy was simple. Capitalize on the intrinsic valley values of small towns, commercial district, its ambience, its heritage buildings, and its streetscape. Work with the local businesses and property owners to help get organized, find partners, and give them the tools to help champion for your cause. Look at ways to market and promote pride of place. Encourage conservation of heritage buildings and take on community-led economic revitalization. Things like establishing live theater, live summer theater, moving sections of the Rito bus mall from Ottawa and reassembling it as a glass pavilion in the downtown core. Building, on downtown, building a downtown hotel, rehabilitating old industrial buildings and supporting and partnering with organizations like Algonquin College. Our four-year stint has turned into a 43-year commitment in, in terms of family, all three of our sons have sought and are enjoying their careers. JJ knew exactly what he wanted. He wanted to be a chef and went to New England Culinary Institute. His degree has been his passport, allowing him to work in the Cayman Islands and in parts of Europe as chef. He now is the chef and owner of Fiddleheads at Codes Mill. Andrew, our second son, went through a bit of a Goldilocks syndrome. He started out in architecture. That wasn't quite what he wanted. Uh, he then went on to graduate in computer animation and design and was working in Toronto. When he came back to Perth as a student in the Algonquin College Heritage Carpentry and Joinery Program, he found a career that was just right and has never looked back. Christopher, our youngest son, graduated in interior design. He worked with Commonwealth for a number of years and since then has established his own business, landscape and design and contracting. 
His gardens are amazing. He is a self-taught plantsman, propagator, and collector of native and endangered plant species. I, I think, or I guess, if I had best advice, I, I, <clears throat> I'd have to say, don't be afraid of making mistakes and of failing. Enjoy your success, will your way through turbulence, and remember your life bucket list may not have included failure, but it happens. The only thing to do is pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and hope, hopefully um, there's something to learn from it. Michelle Obama, in her recent book, The Light We Carry, writes about learning how to knit. And throughout the book, she uses knitting as a metaphor for dealing with career and life. She recommends that you take care of your knitting, focus on, on honing your skills, and dealing with things that you can control. It's also important to think creatively. Sometimes it's necessary to look outside the box, and most important, recognize and embrace the value and input from colleagues and partners. We know you are all capable and will contribute in positive ways to your professions. You are, a, uh, you are Algonquin graduates. We expect nothing less. Strive to be the best version of yourself and remember the journey is often the best part. Don't focus on getting to the end. Consider convocation as a stepping stone your diploma or certi certificate are your passport. It's a tool that allows you to show that you have an understanding. It documents that, you're, that you've gone through an important process. It doesn't mean you're, you've got all the answers, but you have learned how to think with the skills to process and come up with answers. Your diploma is portable has great shelf life, no expiry date, and is backed by an amazing institution, Algonquin College. And in closing, in dealing with others, be thoughtful. Don't be a bully. In life's negotiations, leave something on the table for the other person, and most important, build community service into your life's work. Thank you. Thank you, John, and congratulations. I'm now pleased to call upon our Perth campus valedictorian. Emma Martin is graduating today from the Business Agriculture Program. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, faculty members, and students, it is my privilege to introduce to you our valedictorian for this graduating class. This remarkable individual embodies the spirit of academic excellence, leadership, and unwavering dedication. This honor is a distinction that reflects not only her outstanding academic performance, but also her commitment to personal growth and her contributions to our school community. Emma is an exceptional student leader. She served her classmates as an outstanding representative for the Students Association during her two years in the Business Agriculture Program. Her contributions went beyond her own program and helped improve campus life for all Perth campus learners. Along with other students, she contributed to organizing our first charity hockey game, which garnered significant interest uh, and brought a team of alumni back on campus. Though we continued to emerge from the pandemic over this past year, the lasting presence continued to present challenges for our students. Emma has exemplified true leadership by extending a helping hand to her fellow classmates, guiding them through the challenges imposed by the pandemic and subsequent adaptations that we all had to make. As a student leader, her numerous recommendations and advo advocacy efforts were a significant aid to her classmates and will go on to benefit students in the future as well. Her selflessness and dedication have not only helped classmates navigate uncertainties, 
but also fostered a sense of unity and strength within our school community. As we listen to our valedictorian's reflections and insights, let us celebrate her achievements while also recognizing that she is a representative of the exceptional talents and accomplishments of our entire graduating class. Her journey serves as an inspiration to each of us, reminding us of the heights that we can achieve through hard work, perseverance, and a steadfast commitment to our goals. Over the past two years, Emma has demonstrated her commitment to her studies, her classmates, the Perth campus, and all of Algonquin College. She is indeed a worthy recipient of this award, and it is my pleasure to present Emma Martin, your Perth campus valedictorian for 2023. Good evening, parents, friends, teachers, mentors, administrators, and of course, my fellow graduates of 2023. Tonight, we will become Algonquin College graduates who are destined for nothing but the great things. We are the next generation of people to take over this world. No matter what our reasons were for choosing Algonquin so very few years ago, what is important now is that we are all here tonight to celebrate our triumphs, our achievements, our victories, both individually and as a school, and the journey on which we have all embarked toward in our future destinations. I am Emma Martin, your valedictorian, and I, and I am honored to be standing here in front of you today. To begin with, I wanna start off with a huge congratulations to all of my peers. As I look out and see all of you in front of me, I am incredibly proud, we did it. Our journey to where we are is nothing short of challenging. We did not get to have a proper graduation from high school or ever, wherever we may have came from. All, and all of us got to choose to attend post-secondary in a scary time for not only our growth and development, but for the whole world. We sat many days and many hours in little black boxes, wondering what each other looked like from time in and time out. The first year was time to make mistakes. The second year was a time to learn from them and it was full speed ahead with her eyes on the prize. Lectures always harped on us about the importance of being there and listening and not falling asleep when your camera wasn't on and you were supposed to be listening, but you weren't. We took the leap and enrolled when most people hid from the world. Each of us had our own unique experiences at Algonquin with a combination of good times, bad times, times of laughter and times of joy, times of school spirit, and of course, the times of last minute studying for that exam that we forgot was taking place tomorrow and the projects that we didn't quite finish. I have many fond memories with many of my people here and bonds that I believe have become unbreakable. The great thing about Algonquin is that there are so many people with completely different, but nonetheless amazing talents. There are people sitting in the audience right now who are woodworkers who construct beautiful pieces of art that I could never do. There are nurses who can care for us in some of the best ways. There are farmers who will continue to feed the world. And there are people out there who take care of our children day in and day out. There are others who aspire to do amazing things and we all have the world at our feet. No matter what your future looks like, it is let the ensuring success inflate your happiness level and never settle for nothing less than great because you can do it. It is these experiences that will mark the truly remarkable years of your life. As I glance over my audience this evening, many people need to be thanked. To our teachers, thank you for your patience as we navigated not properly going to school for three years or whatever lay before us beforehand. To our parents, thank you for believing in us. Thank you for being just as scared as we were along with all of the other people in our life who believed that we had greatness that just wasn't quite unlocked yet. Thank you to family and friends for being with us both tonight and throughout our lives. And to my fellow graduates, thank you for spending the last two years with me, even if it was via a black screen for a short time or just providing one of those eye smiles we got so good at when our masks were up to here. 
Thank you for being friends that became my family as I was so far, far away from my actual one. Thank you for making me who I am today standing in front of you. More specifically, thank you parents for being our coaches. Thank you teachers for being, thank you teachers and administrators for being our mentors. And thank you to my friends for being my teammates. I am proud of every single one of us and I am proud to say that I spent two years of knowing you or getting to experience college life with you. I cannot wait to see what the future holds for every single one of you, and I am beyond proud to say that I am graduating with some of the finest individuals. Please always remember this. You, you know who you are, and you know where you came from. This is important to take with you. This is just the start. Be proud to call yourself an Algonquin grad, because I know I am. Thank you, and enjoy your evening. Thank you, Emma. Thank you for your words of, of reflection, of, of thanks, of celebration, and of hope for the future. We now turn to the part of the ceremony where we recognize our graduates. I would again like to call upon Dean Hahn to come to the podium and introduce the graduates of the Perth campus. Thank you, Chris. I am pleased to be here on behalf of the faculty and staff of Algonquin College Perth campus who are all very proud of our graduates and feel privileged to have been part of their successful learning journeys. So at this time, on behalf of Algonquin College, I would like to acknowledge the commitment and successes of the Perth campus graduates. And at this time, I would ask you to please rise as you are able to be presented for graduation. Mr. President, each of these graduates has dedicated themselves to successfully completing the requirements of their program. These individuals are ready to make their mark in their chosen career, and it is with great pleasure and honor that I recommend them for graduation. Thank you, graduates. Please be seated. Thank you, Dean Hahn. I will now ask President Brule to step forward to receive the graduates. Graduates, recognizing the ongoing health challenges facing the world, President Brule, in lieu of shaking hands, will be placing his hand over his heart as you cross the stage and, and greet him uh, as a sign of respect for your accomplishments. Guests of the graduates, may I ask you to please hold your applause until all credentials have been presented. That said, a well-placed hooter holler really isn't going to hurt anyone, so holler away. I now ask Martin Savard, Program Coordinator of the Business Agriculture Program, to come forward and begin the presentation of the graduates. Martin? for business agriculture. John Cross. Taylor Anderson, honors. Reese Ope. Logan Currenches. Honors.
Ian Cope, honors. Kaylee Newman. Isabella Poirier, honors. Caitlin Vanderheide, honors. Eve Veldhausen. Dylan Wallace, honors. Dylan is this year's co-recipient of the Business Agriculture Business Plan Award presented by beanscars.ca, Galton Place. Now for Business Agriculture Co-op, Abigail Cocking. Rebecca Agate, honors. Emma Martin, honors. Emma is this year's recipient of the Business Agriculture Leadership in Agriculture Award presented by Grenville Mutual Insurance. I would like to invite Dave McLaughlin, Risk Assessment Specialist at Grenville Mutual Insurance to present the award. Congratulations. Brent McIntyre, honors. Amanda St. Denis, Amanda is this year's co-recipient of the Business Agriculture Business Plan Award, also presented by BingCars.ca, uh, Calton Place. I would now invite Sean Barr, Academic Chair for Perth Campus, to call our next program. Uh, good evening. Um, I have to take an advantage of, uh, there's not a microphone I've ever met that I didn't like, so I have an opportunity to uh, say to all the students, uh, I apologize for the last two plus years I've been chasing you around trying to put your freaking masks on. Uh, it was part of my job, I had to do it, I'm sorry. Uh, early childhood education, Madison Georgiatis. James Illingworth. Glody Bicamboli. Christina Pasut. Jacqueline Pye, honors. <laughs> Haley Scott, honors. I would now like to call Darren Tubman, coordinator of the Heritage Carpentry and Joinery Program to call our next program. Heritage Carpentry and Joinery. Samuel Bowlby, honors. Sebastian Brooks. Stephen Frodsham, honors. 
Stephen is this year's co-recipient of the Outstanding Achievement in Timber Framing Award. Julia Gilmore, honors. <laughs> We're good for it, Stephen. <laughs> Sorry. Julia Gilmore, honors. Oh, we're waiting. Sorry. Chris Jarrett. How about this? Jack Kilmer, honors. Oh, Jack is this year's recipient of the inaugural Heritage Carpentry and Journey Team Record, donated in memory of Joanne Armstrong. Wyatt Knapp, honors. Jameson Laxo, honors. Jameson is this year's recipient of the award for dedication to the carpentry trade presented by Perth Home Hardware Building Center. Alexandre La Liberté. Christopher Mayo, honors. Christopher is this year's recipient of the dedication to the field of preservation in Canadian, in, preservation in Canada award presented by Commonwealth Historic Resource Management. I would like to invite our honorary degree recipient, John Stewart, to present the award. Nell Mayo. Owen Paisley. Shinu Uni Kushnan. Yeah. Cameron Smedley. Cameron is this year's recipient of the Outstanding Achievement in Joinery Skills presented by Lee Valley. Callum Thompson, honors. Daniel Thornhill, honors. Laura Lee Trulove. Logan Warner. And Nick Zollner. I'd like to invite Tiffany McRae from our practical nursing faculty to call our next program. Good evening, thank you. Um, I just wanna start, in case there's anyone in our audience, any of our graduates, any of our families, any of our faculty that does not know that this is our very first Algonquin College Perth Practical Nursing Graduates. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
these students entered healthcare during the pandemic. And I'm so very proud to say with everyone's help, we have now made 38 new nurses to help us through. Congratulations. First, we have April Ayers. Rupanjal Daya. Don Davis. Chelsea Arrett, who graduates with honors. Abharami Azuka Halathil. Livia Lilo George. Alyssa Jesty. Gersamar Carr. Norveer Carr. Sukmin Carr. Taranjit Carr. Mihak Preet Kar Sashdeva graduates with honors. Leah Manners. Amy McNeely graduates with honors. Sophia Mohammed. <laughs> Tuscany Moore. Naman Naman. Calista Ebel Ora graduates with honors. Ishika Panwar. Sharmil Patel graduates with honors. Trivia Pinnock. <laughs> Anna Petu Sejan graduates with honors. Vivek Sahota graduates with honors. Jewel Saji. Parvati Saji.
Amal Mary Saju. Manroop Kar Sandhu graduates with honors. Arnav Singh. Gersimran Singh. Gertaj Singh graduates with honors. Joseph Thomas. Amber Tissick. Raven Vo. Hasina Wardak graduates with honors. And Autumn Wright graduates with honors. May I please ask the graduates to stand. <laughs> Guests of the graduates, the Algonquin Perth Campus Class of 2023. Thank you, please be seated. Thank you, Sean. Uh, President Brule, I'd ask you to step forward for just a little bit longer, please, here. Um, as we um, invite our, our um, college and campus-wide awards uh, recipients to the stage. Convocation is also the occasion to present special awards to students who have excelled in their academic careers. Our program awards were all presented moments ago to our graduates, but now we would like to present the remaining campus awards, beginning with the Robert C. Gillett Leadership Award. This award is presented to a graduating student in a post-secondary or graduate certificate program who demonstrates exemplary volunteer leadership, which contributes to the overall Algonquin College student experience. I'd like to invite this year's recipient, Haley Scott, graduate of the Early Childhood Education Program, forward to receive their award. Congratulations, Haley. Our next award, the Algonquin College Perth Campus Annual Award for Academic Excellence, is presented to a graduate of the Perth campus who has maintained a high level of academic achievement and has made an outstanding contribution to sporting school activities and influencing the quality of life at the campus. I would invite Dean Han, Ho Han forward, excuse me, uh, to join President Brule in presenting this year's Perth Campus Annual Award of Excellence to Chelsea Errett, graduate of the Practical Nursing Program.
Congratulations, Chelsea. And now, the Perth Campus Indomitable Spirit Award. This award is presented to a graduate of a post-secondary program who has made a significant contribution to the campus and or program activities while overcoming significant challenges. I would like to invite former Dean of Perth Campus, Linda Cook, to present this year's award. This year's recipient is Manrup Kar Sandhu, graduate of our practical nursing program. Congratulations, Van Roo. Next, the Perth Leadership Award, or the Perth Campus Leadership Award. This award is presented each year to a graduate of a post-secondary program who has demonstrated leadership with both student and campus initiatives, has contributed to the local community, and has a grade point average of at least 3.0. I would like to invite former Dean of the Perth Campus, Joan McCartney, to present this year's award. The Perth Campus, Campus Leadership Award recipient for 2023 is Arnav Singh. Congratulations, Arnav. Finally, the Governor General's Collegiate Bronze Medal. The Governor General's Collegiate Bronze Medal is awarded to the graduate who achieves the highest academic standing in the final year of a diploma level post-secondary program. This year's recipient of the Governor General's Collegiate Bronze Medal is Jacqueline Pye. Congratulations to all of our award winners and congratulations, Jacqueline. Ah, we're getting close to the end. Thank you and congratulations, graduates. There are many within the college who work hard to plan and coordinate this ceremony. And they really are too numerous to, to name each one of them. We would be here for quite some time still. But I would like to take a moment uh, to thank them for their efforts and just give them a round of applause. They're around here somewhere. It has been a pleasure to celebrate, you, celebrate with you today. And it is also my pleasure to welcome you, our graduates, as our newest members of the Algonquin Alumni Association. How about you stand up just one more time so that we can now recognize you as alumni. Thanks, you can be seated again. We, we do welcome all of you to our friends and uh, welcome all of your friends and family. Um, oops, sorry about that. That's, uh, we, were, we were starting over. Anybody wanna start over? All right, um, sorry about that. Um, graduates, alumni, please do send us your success stories and stay connected through the Algonquin alumni website. As we come to the end of our program, I want to acknowledge the joy, love, and pride gathered here today. We invite all of our graduates and their families and friends to gather and continue our celebration in the foyer. 
there you'll find several really good places where you can take pictures and graduates please remember to leave your academic gowns with our team before you leave uh, many thanks to our graduates and to your families and friends for joining us today and making this ceremony a happy occasion for all of us congratulations and best wish wishes Families and friends may I ask you to please stand as you are able and remain standing until the end of the recession of the stage party, the faculty, and the graduates. Thank you. <laughs>